It's time for The Line of Fire with your host, activist, author, international speaker, and theologian, Dr. Michael Brown. Your voice of moral, cultural, and spiritual revolution. Michael Brown is the director of the Coalition of Conscience and president of Fire School of Ministry. Get into The Line of Fire now by calling 866-34-TRUTH. That's 866-34-TRUTH. Here again is Dr. Michael Brown. Right away. Seven eight eight four is the toll free number nationwide for the line of fire. I'm Stu Everson sitting in for my good friend Dr. Michael Brown, who should be back, Lord willing, Monday. He's recovering and he is extremely grateful for your prayers. I watched a cool Instagram video with him yesterday, updating everyone, and he is uh, very, very grateful for all the support, the love, the prayers. He'll be back soon, live right here in the hot seat of the line of fire. In the meantime, I'm asking the question today all day long, should Christians ever use the words, let's go, Brandon? Now, what am I talking about? If you don't know what I'm talking about, I would love, I would love to talk to you. And I would love to tell you right now what is going on in the culture. We have some headlines here. The number is 866-34-TRUTH. I have been talking to people all day about this, and I had... I have Christians who are replaying large crowds. Even one crowd at a church yelled, let's go, Brandon. Now, it wasn't during the church service. Apparently, it was kind of like a conservative family rally for the family, talking about how our freedoms are being taken away. People are upset at the the, the, the socialism, the communism, the, the, the stuff, the anti-God, pro-abortion, anti-marriage, anti-family agenda of the current political leadership in our country. And some people got just are getting flat out angry and vulgar. And they're saying they're saying the F bomb. With Joe Biden's initials, FJB, they're saying that they're posting that they're not even saying that they're spelling it out. In fact, in fact, check this out. Um, uh, People are putting the hashtag FJB, but people are actually spelling the words. I was just at lunch with a good Christian radio partner who was driving through North Carolina and a guy put up an entire um a guy put up an entire giant sign with the let the the curse words spelled out the f bomb and then Joe Biden and he was a fit he's got his kids in the car so he wrote the guy a letter he said look I'm a Christian I'm driving down the road and I see this and I got young ears and young eyes in the car will you please take the sign down Maybe say something different. And so some people have said, well, I'm saying let's go, Brandon, so that I don't have to say the bad word. I don't have to cuss. And um, so, so that, you know, that's what other, you know, that's what some people were saying. So then I read one of my Instagram friends post and they very graciously, they said, they said very graciously, they said, No church, no Christian should ever utter the words, let's go, Brandon. They said, because it's the same as cussing. If you say the words, let's go, Brandon, you're cursing. You're using the F-bomb. So do you think that? Is that true? And so then the next question is, if Christians are upset with the the way the government's going, if if they're, you know, they see that that Joe Biden's, his um, rate of approval is is below 33%. They see these anti-God, just really evil things that some of our political leaders are pressing right now, pushing. They see that. They're like, well, how do I express myself? Well, I don't cuss. I'm not a cursing man. So I say the words, let's go, Brandon. (laughs) So is it ever okay for Christians to say those words? I want to hear from you. And in the meantime, there is a man of God in the studio who's going to help us sort through this. I've got some headlines here. Um... 
And I've got some other updates, and I want to hear from you on a Friday. It's almost a little bit like like a, like a free-for-all. And I know on Dr. Brown's show, he gets real on Fridays, and you guys you pepper him with all kinds of great questions. And so if you've got a, a Bible question, we'll bat that around. It's a, it's a very interesting topic today because we're kind of seeing as, as our faith crosses into the culture and into politics. And there's no one that does that quite like a guy named Chris Hughes, who's really a rising star with his own show. I'm going to let him introduce that. Chris, jump on here. Uh, Grayson, let's get his microphone up. Okay, Chris, welcome to the line of fire. Hey, Good to Stu, see you, it's exciting to be on the line of fire today. Well, you jumped into the fire. That, now, that's what I hear. You pulled me right into well, it. Well, I had to any, pull him into it. Wasn't any easy topic that you threw me well, into. Well, this is big time. Now, 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 let me ask you, put the mic right on your chin and tell me what is... Tell everyone the name of your new program. It's launching nationwide. It's pretty hot. There's a podcast, too. Yeah, it's called The Christian Perspective with Chris Hughes. We're going to launch in February. It's going to be a great new program, Stu, where people can come on and learn how to. Uh, what does the Bible say on issues like abortion, homosexuality, or let's go, Brandon? What does the Bible yeah. say about these kind of issues, and how can we apply that in our daily lives and have a biblical worldview? Biblical worldview is just the lens through which we see the world and live our lives. And as Christians, that lens needs to be through the lens of the Bible, where we can understand what God's Word says and apply it to every facet of our life. And the topic you're talking about today, let's go, Brandon, is that is that really what a Christian be, should be saying and doing? There you go. So we're going to look at both sides of that. We want to take your calls at 866-34-TRUTH, 866-348-7884. If you're a Christian and you like saying the words, let's go, Brandon, call us and tell us why. If you think a Christian should never say that, it should be off limits. Like I just literally the last three people I interviewed, I talked to out there, truth on the streets. They said, this is terrible. Christians should never say that. It's it's just like cussing. And so let's explore that, Chris. So let's talk about that for a second, because you obviously are a believer. You don't think Christians should use those words, per right. se. Right. I mean, because you're saying the Bible tells us that we need to pray for our leaders, too. And I don't agree with hardly anything that President Biden stands for or does, but he is a leader, and God's given him the opportunity to be in this position now. And I believe that we should be praying for his salvation and praying for God to give him guidance. I mean, can you imagine, Stu, if, if President Biden got saved, the impact that it could wow. have on our culture and our world— so what are we doing when we say, let's go, Brandon? And for maybe some of the listeners, and I came in late here in the studio, I don't know if you explained, but what happened is several months ago, a race car driver was being interviewed. Did you cover that? Yeah, or I, I heard it. Well, no, tell, and, us, tell us the story. This is the history of it. This is why it's yeah, important. So, so a race car have, driver. Have smarter people than you on the show. With you. <laughs> uh, the race car, this race car driver was being interviewed by a reporter. And and what had happened is the week or two prior to that, across at, at different sporting events, not just NASCAR, across the country, people started screaming, and I'm not going to use a word, but basically F Joe Biden. But they weren't saying F. They were saying the real world word. So when this reporter was interviewing this race car driver, whose name is Brandon, she said, oh, listen, the fans love you so much. They're shouting, let's go, Brandon. But that's not what they were shouting. They were shouting the other F, thing. F. Joe you. Biden. So people adopted. So let me ask you this. OK, say you're a believer. Let me take the devil's advocate. OK, this is very sensitive. I mean, I may have I may be unfriended and unliked by all <laughs> kinds of different people once they figure out what well, trying to pin me down in a position. But I'm literally trying to as neutrally as possible. Let me tell you the, the long game on this show today. The long game on this show today is we want Christians to think biblically, to right. speak biblically, and to, yes, pray for their leaders. And, of course, you know, avoid profane language, avoid foolish things like the Scriptures, co you know, command. And I'm glad you're here with, you know, so I can put you in the hot seat on this, Chris <laughs> Hughes, with your Biblical Worldview program. But here's, supposing you're a believer, and supposing you're very unhappy with how the government is, 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 is they're literally... They're, you know, they're driving a communist agenda. They're literally just destroying our economy, as it were. And, you know, your eggs aren't in this basket. You're you're heaven bound. And but you want to be a light and salt and light. But in your with your freedom of speech, you want to express yourself. You want to express disdain. You're like, well, I don't curse. I never curse. I don't want to curse. I don't want anything to do with cursing. But, oh, I can say, let's go, Brandon, instead of dropping the F-bomb. So that way it's a way it's a clean way of saying it. Maybe like. Instead of, you know, using, you know, GD saying, you know, golly darn it, like a lot of Christians do, or a lot of Christians will say stink yeah. or, or, you know, or, or snap. You know, I remember my daughter Hope when she was little, it was kind of cool. All her friends were saying snap. I'm like, that's kind of cool. Or but flipping. I, yeah. Well, you know, so when you started getting into flipping and you started getting into freaking, yeah. then you start getting into, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's like, sounds like it. Yeah. Let's go Brandon. It sounds nothing like 
you know, the F-bomb or the name Joe Biden. OK, yeah. so my, so I'm just saying that's how people think. And they're like, look, I'm just expressing my my freedom of speech to show that that I am not going to bow to a, to a, to an evil regime. But then again, you've got people saying, if you say that you're cussing. So let's get some callers in here. Eight, six, six, three, four, truth, eight, six, six, three, four, eight, seven, eight, eight, four. And I would love for you, if you're against it, to say what's a good alternative. Throw your ideas out there. And if you think it's OK, tell us why. And. And we'll have a good conversation. That's the other thing I love about this program. We're having a conversation. And we're talking. We're loving each other. And because our ultimate goal is to point people to Jesus Christ. By the way, am I going to not say that if it's going to cause my brother to stumble? Just like I won't eat meat at the end of chapter 8 of of 1 Corinthians. He said, I'll eat no meat if it causes my brother to stumble. So it could be a weaker brother issue, too. So instead of, you know, blasting it in front of everybody, maybe we should take pause on that. So we're going to jump all the way to Texas. And we're going to talk to David. And David. You are on the air. God bless you. Thanks for calling in. Hey, God bless you, Stu. I'm a pastor down here in Corpus Christi, Texas. And in fact, I did a podcast episode about this very subject. Oh, my. And, uh, yep, on restoring your voice. Yes. Um, and I completely disagree with any use of it. Okay. So people are looking okay. for alternatives. And I can give a biblical alternative, all right? Yes, sir. So in the Bible, it says to pray for those who are in authority, right? Uh-huh. It didn't say we like them. We agree with them. In fact, the Roman government at the time was the most oppressive government the world had ever seen up to that okay. point, correct? Okay. Yes, sir. So, and in fact, the words of Jesus says, pray for your enemies. Wow. And so if people, and they may rightly see it, Joe Biden has an enemy. However, we are supposed to pray for him. Wow. And yes, I'm going to be controversial to many. Bless him according to the words of Jesus. I didn't say it. Bless those who first you. you. I mean, look, you know, it's interesting, David, you're bringing these verses up. We like these verses when it comes to like, like kind of like one of those enemies that's maybe a little more practical, maybe on the basketball court. We don't like this verse when it comes up in politics because a lot of Christians, they, they do bifurcate. And this is why Chris Hughes is so strong. Chris, Christians, like sometimes they're leaving their faith to go into the voting booth and that swing swings both ways. Yeah, they're voting does. for evil candidates with evil agendas, but the way but on the other side they're 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 not a good testimony in how they're treating their opponents. Shouting them down. Chris, comment on David, this Pastor David. He has spoken. What do you say? Hey, Pastor David, I agree with you. I think it lowers it makes us lower ourselves to their level. Okay. So we've got to take a stand and not okay. say David, thanks for your call. More calls. We got a line oh, open at 34 truth. Hang on. You know, if you feel like you're stuck with a healthcare plan that isn't affordable or you simply don't like it, right now is a great time to switch to MediShare. The typical family saves $500 a month when they join MediShare, and what's more, they like it. MediShare has double the customer satisfaction rate compared to the typical health insurance plan. That's double. So you get a massive network of providers to choose from. You get telehealth services and MediShare is the most trusted name in healthcare sharing. It's been around for more than 25 years, shared more than $4 billion in healthcare bills. Here's why now really is the time to make the switch, too. You can start saving each month, which is huge, but right now they'll waive your joining fee. So you'll save another $170 right off the bat. But again, it's a limited time offer. You got to call now. And it only takes two minutes to find out how much you'd save by switching. Here's the number, 855-SHARE-40. That's 855-S-H-A-R-E-40, 855-SHARE-40. Baby, I just don't think people realize how much money they can save by getting used car parts from 109U Pulley. Well, let's give them some examples, like the guy who saved over $200 buying the door glass for the Chevy truck, or the customer who saved over $400 buying the Buick alternator. Honey, you're a genius, but I knew that when you married me. Dial seven eight eight nine one two two. Buy used car parts from 109 U Pull It. And you'll save a lot of money. I'm standing in this massive showroom at Consignment Furniture Emporium. This place is packed. Linda Kelly, what's going on? Anytime the home market is on the up, so is our business and what we can acquire. We always talk about having a great week and how much inventory that we bring in. This place is like it's never been before. Come see Linda and the gang at CFE, Consignment Furniture Emporium, just off South Stratford Road, 130 Cloverleaf Drive. Flame, send the fire. 
It's the line of fire with your host, Dr. Michael Brown. Your voice of moral, cultural, and spiritual revolution. Here again is Dr. Michael Brown. An honor to sit in the hot seat in the line of fire. Stu Epperson in for my good friend, Dr. Brown, who is recovering and doing great on his way back. Lord willing, Monday back in his chair. And he is very grateful to all of you for all your prayers. I can't think of three words that have made more Christians mad at each other from social media to in the church. And these three words are, let's go, Brandon. And the instant gut reaction, knee-jerk reaction from a lot of people I talk to, I'm going to play a couple of clips from Truth on the Streets. I talked to people out there earlier. Is they say, well, that's just like cussing. Because it's the substitute for the F-bomb in front of Joe Biden's name. But then the other the other side is saying, well, look, it's just it's a it's a free speech thing. And if I want to cuss, I would say the F-bomb, but I'm not a cusser. I want to honor God with my speech and I want to speak my free speech and speak my frustration with the government. So that's why I'm saying it. And how dare you call me cussing, Chris Hughes? <laughs> Stu, I don't know. You know and I don't want to laugh about the cussing part because I'm on the side of saying that we as Christians should not say that. But did you see in the news a couple of weeks ago, uh, President Biden was interviewing a veteran. Uh, he was going to some ribbon cutting or something, talking to a veteran. At the very end, the veteran said, you know, thank you, Mr. President, for helping veterans. And by the way, let's go, Brandon. And President Biden himself said, yes, let's go, Brandon. Yeah. I support let's go, Brandon. So, so should we pick on him? <laughs> I mean, he shouldn't cuss like that. How dare That's a sitting right. president use that kind of language? But. So so anyway, I mean, we say golly and gosh and and doggone and and, you know, Bobby Bowden, dadgummit. You know, he still yeah. say dadgummit, you know, an average of, you know, 1800 times in one, you know, 20 second interview, two minute interview, you know. But, you know, uh, what a great man of God he was. Yes, and I'm he glad was. he said dadgummit. You know, I'm glad he didn't use the foul language. But there are Christians. I grew up with people that literally I grew up with people that if I said, oh, my goodness, Literally, they put me on a timeout yep. when they babysat. Yep. They were babysitters. Very conservative. And by the way, now I like that. You know, back yep. then I wasn't happy. I wasn't happy camper. But I'm glad someone had some standards and values. But my point is, I said, well, why do you keep putting me on a timeout for saying, oh, my goodness. You know, I'm probably, what, seven, eight, nine years old. They're Using like, the Lord's name in vain. Because only God is good. And when you say, oh, my goodness, or oh, my gosh, or golly, or, yep. or doggone it, or gosh darn it, you're saying, you're cussing without cussing. Yep. Right? And so it's almost like, so... We say things like snap or, you know, or something harmless like the you know, the dadgummit that, you know, Bobby Bowden popularized. Yeah. Well, isn't let's go, you know, Brandon, someone that's kind of conservative and Christian and wanting to speak out. Is that their way of doing it? So we've got the calls coming in. We have one line open at 866-34-TRUTH, 866-348-7884. Chris Hughes, nationally syndicated talk show host. With the Christian perspective is with us. Yes, the new show's launching soon, but you already have a podcast, right? Yeah, we'll tell we've everyone had what a it's podcast called. Since June, it's called the Christian Perspective wow. with Chris Hughes. You can find it at the Truth Podcast Network. So, speaking truth in these issues is so important, which is why we're on the air today, and why we're so glad you're calling in. And we're talking to Spence. Spence, jump on in the hot seat, my friend. Welcome to the show. Hey, how's it going? Great, How man. How you guys doing? What do you think? <clears throat> well, you know, I agree that Christians possibly should be encouraging more and not say that but i also find that considering the gravity of the situation america finds it and i find it kind of a trivial matter to even be discussing considering some of the threats for the faith-based families and people going on in america you know yeah yeah is you know that's an interesting comment and i and i think and what we're trying to do is take something that is very trivial seemingly trivial but it has to do kind of with, you know, Jesus said, out of the heart, the mouth speaks. Mm. So what comes out your mm. mouth is a reflection of your heart. And so, yeah. it, you know, so how do we address this at the heart level? And how do we keep this kind of subject topic from getting people, you know, get, keeping Christians from strangling each other? I mean, when this church had a, it was a guy like a Chris Hughes, like you, speaking. It was a conservative Christian rally for the family. In a church, it wasn't a church service. It wasn't the Sunday morning worship, and they yeah. some some folks chanted, "Let's go, Brandon." They were talking about you know how the government well, is literally trying to make abortion more. They're trying yeah. to destroy families and marriage yeah. and all that. Late and it, abortion, right? So yeah. so suddenly, I mean, the fireback from I mean the the reaction from all kinds of Christian leaders, like how dare they say those words in a church? Christians should never utter those words. 
So, I mean, I'm telling well, you. That's the whole point of the Let's Go Brandon is with the faith, you know, people that have, they don't want to say that. They've, you know, kind of. Right. They say, let's go, Brandon. So what so is a Christian? You know, so what is not, a Christian? So if it's not, if a Christian is not going to curse and a Christian is not going to say, let's go, Brandon, because now all the other Christians are saying you say that you're wrong. What do, what do they say, Chris Hughes? I think Christians should really, I think they should really take a look at where they fit into the political landscape a little bit more. You know, okay. people of God don't really have a place in politics. They, and especially in these times. They're going to come. People are going to come to find that. But yeah. Spence, but Spence why do you say that? Why Why do you think that Christians don't have a place in politics? Are you saying we shouldn't be Christians involved? I don't think have a place in the current landscape of politics yeah. uh-huh. because um, there's nothing godly about um, some of the situations that these people are pushing. And it's not just a Republican or a Democrat. That's kind of play in the the devil's advocate right. why don't really why don't more believe what, why don't more believers run for office what about godly people like congressman mark walker who loves jesus and shares christ on the hill with other people he's friends with people that aren't his party he's friends with liberals because he wants to lead them to christ and he's and he's gracious about it and he's not mean-spirited what, what about what about christians being redemptive even in politics is it possible it's chris hughes you think it is yeah, don't exactly. you yes, I and do. that's exactly what and and there and people are start you're starting to see Christian people getting involved in that, and that's why they're quabbling over should you say let's go Brandon or not. Yeah, it makes I it mean, tricky. really, that's sort of a trivial trivial matter okay. at this point. All right. Let, hey, I appreciate yeah, your I call, think, Spence. I think they've already took the the, uh, the vulgarity out of it, yeah. and people are just, um, you know, saying what they believe. This is America, you yeah. know? Yeah. Okay. Oh, very good. Spence thinks it's, it's a bit trivial. And he hey, thinks it's a cl- that, yeah. Hey, thanks, yes, sir. God bless you. Good to hear from Spence. I mean, a little other perspective. He thinks, hey, they're 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 saying something that's clean, so they don't have to cuss, but they can express their frustration with the the current regime, which which has an evil agenda for certain. And so, what about that? Let's see what Laura says. Laura, you're on the line of fire. Hi. Stu Everson in for Doctor Brown. Now, if someone else wants to call in, talk about this. We'd love Hi. to hear from you. 866-34-TRUTH, 866-348-7884. Should Christians ever say the words, let's go, Brandon? Spence doesn't think it's that bad a deal. What does Laura think? Good afternoon, my brother. and You're worth the wait to, to hang out with you right now. Well, God bless you. Thanks for saying <laughs> that. We like hanging out with you, too. <laughs> uh, oh, that's who's looking at me through the radio. Uh, anyway, um, as Christians, we need to remember who we are. To me, you know, um, that's how I feel. Um, we're children of God now. We're in this world, but we're not of it. And we just, you know, we're not just putting cliches or verses. I mean, for real, we're just in yeah. this world passing through. That's a great and point. Yeah. To try and encourage, encourage each other does not take any effort at all. Yeah. Interesting. To pray for each other doesn't yeah. take any effort. And it, you know, makes makes me feel better huh. you know wow. as far as the, i just uh keep it simple these days what about but, that chris hughes i mean what is, Lord, you know, do, you, do yeah. you think that's wrong when they're basically taking a cuss word they're using a different different term but they're still basically saying f the president of the united oh, yeah. states yeah, but what if but what if they're not what if that's not what they mean because if they if they were saying that they'd say that to Spence's point. No, that's what they mean. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, we, we, we got some pretty strong I, I agree feelings. with you, Laura. Well, well, let me tell you and what Laura and... said that everyone should agree on. Okay. As believers, we are in the world, not of it. And that should impact right. how we communicate. And so we got to take that very seriously. Laura, thanks for calling in. We're going to talk to Russ. And if you want to jump in to the line of fire, it's 866-348-7884. Russ, you're on the air. I'm Stu Epperson. And for Dr. Brown, jump on in here, my friend. Hi, guys. Great show. Thanks. Yeah, Jesus was salt and light. He wasn't afraid. He would go in and say, you whitewashed tombs. He would go in and say, you brood of vipers. He said it like it was. He wasn't afraid. And let's go, Brandon has so much more meaning than just F. Joe Biden that, you know, to say that's it and and call it that is to miss out on a lot of the points that that it conveys. Okay. Jesus, when he spoke, you know, there was so much meaning there. And to, to demean it, if somebody was going to say, like you said, F. Joe Biden, they would just say it. So, and, well, so, so he's saying that the, the word. Light. Okay, what is, Chris, what do you say to that? Because there are people that say, like, like in the early days of America, 
when the, this oppressive, oppressive British regime was was putting the putting the, the you know their vice grip on everything, th- there was a there was a revolt, and it's a good thing there was a revolution, right. or we wouldn't be here. And so Christians, you know, in, in communicating kind of along Russia's line, are saying, "Hey, look, this is kind of our expression to say, hey, we will not tolerate this type of oppressive." regime and immorality but chris what what do you well, think Russ, do you think that's hurting a christian testimony though when a large part of the public sector sees it as f joe biden do you think it's hurting a christian's testimony when particularly like Stu was saying a group of people were yelling it in a church service no because if you tell somebody that it's offensive what you're doing is you're using the tyranny of the offended i'm offended therefore whatever I say goes, yeah. because now I've taken the moral high ground. Okay, you've that's got to be able to say it, and you've got to be able to say it in a way, right. you know, without being put down about it, because that might not be what you mean. Okay, and I'm, let me let me throw that wrinkle out there and get some callers on that. Russ, I appreciate your call. I, there is a heightened sense of which, well, you can't, now let's, you can't say anything anymore without offending somebody. So, uh, again, you know, the, the whole the whole idea, Chris. We got we're coming up on a break, I believe. Russ, God bless you. Thanks for your call. We're going to keep this going. The whole idea of well, how far do I go out of my way, right, to not offend people, and they're going to be offended no matter what I say. No matter if what. I say I love Jesus, they're going to be offended. So, but but maybe we should say that. If we said that as much as let's go, Brandon, maybe a revival would break out. Eight six six three four truth. What say you? More coming up on this controversial topic on the line of fire. In Proverbs 28, 13, Solomon says, He who conceals his transgressions will not prosper, but he who confesses and forsakes them will find compassion. Hi, I'm Rob West with today's Money Wise Minute. As many as 50% of married couples aren't always honest with each other about money. We had a call from a wife who lived in fear because she'd concealed credit card bills from her husband, $65,000 worth. Concealing that type of secret can tear a person apart and threaten a marriage. But God gives hope. He says we'll find compassion when we repent of our transgressions. Yes, there may be consequences, and it might be rocky for a while. You might need the help of your pastor or a counselor to work things out. But being honest with your spouse and God is always best. The Money Wise Minute is sponsored by David Belk of Carolina Financial Advisors in Greensboro. For a complimentary consultation, contact him at moneywise.org slash David Belk. The Truth Network would like to say muchas gracias to our amigos at Pancho Villa's Mexican Restaurant for being awesome partners. Pancho Villa's serving all of Mexico's best platters. Stop by and bring the whole family for a cultural experience that's not only delicious, but also authentic. My daughter Joy loves the ACP and the cheese dip. Me encanta la ACP y el queso. Make it a Mexican night at Pancho Villa's, the best Mexican food in the triad. Winston-Salem and High Point. MyPanchoVillas.com. Finding Purpose is a program totally for men. After graduating with a Master of Divinity and finding his purpose, Pastor Russ Andrews knew he wanted to help other brothers to find theirs. Finding Purpose with Pastor Russ speaks directly to the masculine heart. And guys learn how to be Christian without being religious. See, our God is the God of many second chances. Do you need a second chance? Who would like to start over one more time? Finding Purpose with Pastor Russ Andrews. Sunday afternoons at 1 on The Truth Triad. A new resolution or a New Year's determination straight from the Apostle Paul. True Commentary with Stu Epperson, author of the book, First Words of Jesus. Here's my verse for the new year, 1 Corinthians 2.2 2 in 2022. Paul tells us his determination. I'm determined to know Jesus Christ and him crucified. The passion, the consuming determination of his life was to know who Jesus is and why he came. You see, he came as a precious baby in the manger to go to the cross, to wear the crown. He's coming again. After he rose from the dead, he will return, not as a little baby, but as a conquering king. My prayer for you is that you will experience Jesus Christ anew in 2022. 1 Corinthians 2-2 in 2022. That's a New Year's determination. True Commentary with Stu Epperson, author of the book, First Words of Jesus. Available now in bookstores or go online to firstwordsofjesus.com. At Truth Now.
It's the Line of Fire with your host, Dr. Michael Brown, your voice of moral, cultural, and spiritual revolution. Here again is Dr. Michael Brown. And then there's that argument. There's that argument. We say, well, if everyone's doing it, well, do I do it? You're in a crowded room. You're in a crowded room with a bunch of maybe like-minded folks, conservatives, maybe a bunch of Christians. Maybe you're in a big church auditorium or something, and you say, you hear everyone else saying, let's go, Brandon. So you say, let's go, Brandon. And for all you know, you're saying, hey, I'm support. I'm, I'm against what's going on up there. We're, we want to change. Well, a lot of Christians are deeply offended because the original thing they were chanting is they were chanting the F-bomb. Joe Biden. And so we're talking about that right now in the line of fire. Is it ever okay for Christians to say these words? 866-348-7884. 866-34-TRUTH. Now I'm going to get a selfie. Now these guys are doing a pretty good job dressing up Chris. But Chris, we got to get a selfie with that wound. we got to show the scars. <laughs> because we got to show that this is real tough radio here, man. i got to put this on my Instagram, okay? So we're going to do a selfie. I'm going to put it on my story. you got to show this. Let me see that. Let me see that gash, man. You really want to see it? <laughs> yeah, I, I want to see the bandage. We don't want to see the raw wound. You know, we can't take that. But, hey, Christian radio is tough, guys. Chris Hughes. <laughs> With a Christian perspective, everyone wave real quick. We got a lot going on Stu in here. Stu took me to the wet, the woodshed this morning. Well, we're having a lot of fun. Look at that. Just look at that. Look at it. <laughs> awesome. So we're talking about the words, let's go, Brandon. Should Christians ever say those words? I mean, you know, what about this guy? Are we oversensitive to the weaker brother? Are we just going to stay in our closet all day? Is it a clean way for Christians to express their disdain for the, the regime? I mean, is it is it a clean, harmless way instead of cussing? Because I said, a guy earlier said, well, what if I, I don't cuss? If I meant, if I wanted to curse the president, I would curse the president. But I'm saying this to say, hey, I'm not happy with what's going on, but this is a kind of child-friendly way of saying that. You know, you're in the stands, ref makes a bad call, the crowd chants BS. We know what they're saying. I don't chant that as a believer. Right. But I might be upset about that call because my team's about to lose. I'm not going to cuss, but I might, I might, maybe I shouldn't boo. But I would say, hey, what are you thinking? Come on, man. You know, someone give that guy some glasses. He can't see anything, you know. So what is a Christian to do when it comes to this word? Chris Hughes with a Christian perspective is with me. And we are going to talk to Clarence. Clarence, hey, guys, be quick with your comment. We don't have a whole lot of time. we got a whole lot of callers at 866-34-TRUTH. Stu Epperson in for the recovering Michael Brown. Dr. Brown will be back soon. Lord willing, Monday on the line of fire. Clarence. What say you? Welcome to the show. All right. Thank you. Well, uh, there's three points I want to make. I'll okay. Make as quick as I can. Um, I like to think that I'm intelligent enough. I don't have to use cuss words or code words to get my point across. Okay. Yes, sir. I've never had to. If I say a joke, I don't have to use, you know, I don't have to cuss to make the joke funny or anything. That's one. The other thing is, what if there was a song or something insulting women or people of color? Um, is it okay to say, well, I didn't say that. I can tell you now, I'm a black man and there's certain words that if i heard you don't have to explain what you meant if you said them around me you might be in a lot of trouble mm. um and the other thing is that in i think the biggest thing in america is a lot of times we call people christians that aren't really christian okay christ-like is this something that christ would do a lot of people really aren't Christians, but we want to call them Christians because they live. In wow, America. that's a so, that third point I'll strong. Chris Hughes jumped up right when you said that. Chris, what yeah, do you say yeah, to brother, uh, Clarence? I, I think you're right on, and you're spot on. And all we've got to do is look at God's word. What when we're trying to develop a biblical worldview of what we should do and what we should say, Matthew chapter twelve verse thirty seven says, "For by thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned." And I just believe that when we say that, we are condemning. Mm-hmm. We're cursing the president, and I don't mean cursing by the curse word, but in the biblical sense, if you're saying F the president, uh, no matter how you do it, you're putting a curse on him. I'd much rather see us as Christians concentrate our efforts on praying for for, for the president, praying for him to get saved. And I'm glad, you know, I'm not glad that we're using the word, but I'm glad that it's drawing attention. Uh, to the the changes and the differences that we have in our yeah. political process and what's going on. But how about we as Christians direct those efforts and get involved? Instead of saying, uh, let's go, Brandon, how about we go down and register to vote? How about we pray for candidates and recruit candidates to run for yeah. office? How about we help candidates like you mentioned, Stu, earlier, Congressman Mark Walker, men of God who are taking a bold stand for Jesus on the public realm. We could get involved in other ways than putting a curse on the president. Okay, Clarence, thanks for your call. Really appreciate you articulating three points. 
on a on a national radio show. You've got me impressed and encouraged. And let's uh, let's take another caller. God bless you, my friend. Let's see. Let's go to uh, Brooks. I got Brooks on the line. I got a line open at eight six six three four truth. Should Christians ever utter the words "Let's go, Brandon"? Are they in fact cursing? Or are they just saying, "Hey, I want to express myself without cursing"? And that's why I'm glad to say that. Or is the is it so? Is the is is that is the language so colored toward the the vulgar language that no one understands otherwise? And it's why a lot of people are upset. Brooks, jump on in um, here and help us sort this out, will you? Well, I can't really help you sort this out. Um, <laughs> I want to thank you for accepting my phone call. Yes. Um, but I have a question. Um, okay. Is this is this is this the best we can do with our time and energy to advance the kingdom of God? I yeah. mean, if we're in a room and I'm and I'm kind of going to go along with what Clarence said, if if we're in a stadium enjoying a sport or even if we're at church and we're around other self-proclaimed Christians, is this the best that we can do to advance the kingdom of God? Or is there someone near us who we could witness to? Yeah. I, lo- I, need yeah. To hear the I love that question. I mean, Chris, are we, are we just, are we kind of like missing the whole point here? You know, is this, is this become a big distraction? I think in some ways it is a distraction, but Christians do need to be involved in the political process, but not in an evil way. I, I gave a verse a while ago. I'll, I'll go back to God's word again. Ephesians 4.29 says, Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, and that which may minister grace to the hearers. Are we ministering grace to others when we say something that means yeah. F the President of the United States? Yeah. Are we edifying him when we say that? Okay, that's exactly why we're doing this show today on this topic, and I'm glad you called, Brooks. God bless you. Thanks for taking it to the next level. Why not sharing the Lord with someone else? Why not using this topic as a way to say, hey, let's talk about what's really important. Because let's suppose your guy's president. If he doesn't know the Lord, if if you're not growing closer to Christ, you know, it's like, what's the point of all? What does it profit you gain the whole world, lose your own soul? And with that, we're going to jump over to Doug. We lost Doug. Let's go out to Utah and talk to Skip, listening to us on AM820. And 95.3 FM and the new 103.9 FM, the Truth Network in Utah. Skip, God bless you. Thanks for calling the line of fire. God bless you. Thanks for taking my call. What do you think um, about this, Skip? Jump on in here. I, I don't mean to be ignorant, and I don't have every verse you know, memorized, but I do believe that it does say that we as sinners, and you know, there was only one perfect man to walk this earth, and that was Jesus. We have the right to be angry when things you know, aren't, you know, with what's going on, I think the people do have the right to be angry. Um, if I, I think if, you know, what they're saying is, let's go, Brandon is the worst, I think that we could do a lot worse. But, you know, it does say that we're supposed to feed our enemy when he's, when he's hungry and yeah. give him something to drink when he's hungry. So that's most important okay. as a Christian. Well, at least, we can, at, least, at least we can say the words, let's go, Brandon, on the radio without losing our FCC license. You know? <laughs> there you go. So, right. I mean, I'm glad right. about that. It's just the the impression that word has on people that it's, I'm not completely sold that it's a vulgar curse word because it's not. And if I want to say a vulgar curse word, I'd say a vulgar curse word. And, and so I can almost I, can like, I ask you know, a question on it? Yes, sir. Um, how do you feel about that? What does it say exactly? Uh, remind me, please, about you know us as Christians having the right to be angry when things that aren't right are going on. Well, which that's a we great. Know are. Chris quoted from Ephesians four. If you go back a little bit, it talks about be angry but sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. So there's there's a holy indignation Jesus demonstrated. I believe the Apostle Paul demonstrated. If you read like Galatians and how he goes after them in a but in a redemptive, you know, holy, sanctified anger. So absolutely, the question is is are you know are we going to get in the mud with the pigs? You know, are we going to are we going to be in the world and not of it? Are we going to be uh, as Christians? Are we going to fight in a gracious way, stand up for what's right, but do it in a humble, gracious way? I think that's what you go at a lot, Chris Hughes, with your your national program, The Christian Perspective. Right, and I think he has a good point. We we do have a right to be mad as Christians. We should be mad at the sin of the world, but really we need to be mad at ourselves. The Church of Jesus Christ has allowed the situation that we're in today. We sat by quietly for years. You know, it's all fun to have this slogan now, but for years, just like the previous caller, one of the primary responsibilities of every Christian is to tell other people about Jesus. And the only way to truly impact the culture for Jesus is, 
is to lead other people to Jesus. And we have not done a good job of that. Yeah. We've pushed evangelism aside and, and we've sat by quietly while 63 million babies have been brutally murdered through abortion. We, we've we been sitting by quietly while people destroy the traditional family. And it's time for us to take a stand. And But I don't know that Let's Go Brandon is a way that we right. take that stand. Yeah, so the, so the anger, and, the, and that's where... You, you you know, that's where your walk with Christ, you're walking in Christian community. You have anger problems. It doesn't justify it. We need to get we need to be discipled in that. And we, we need to let the Holy Spirit work through us in that. And so we 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 got to you know, I, I, my, my old uh, Bible professor used to be a an ump for church, a church softball league. And these are churches that believe the Bible. He said he heard the worst language. And he saw the most violent anger he'd ever seen at a chumping a church softball league. Yep. Now I say shame on us. I say yeah. shame on me, because we should we should compete, but we do it in a Christ-like way. In the same, and, and we don't. And that that also applies to this sticky, crazy maze of politics. Skip, thanks for your call from Utah. God bless you. Great question. Thank Stay you. tuned. We're gonna we got more of this going around. 866-348-7884. If you want to take a line on the line of fire, I'm Stu Epperson in for my good friend, Dr. Michael Brown. Chris Hughes with a national radio show called The Christian Perspective that's that's launching nationwide. He's already got a podcast. He's already on some radio stations, too, with it. a great program. He's with me. Uh, throw out your website one more time, Chris. Folks are going to ask me. After it's the ChristianPerspective.us. Sure. Okay. Chris, ChristianPerspective.us. Now, Doug's held on for some time. I want to get you in here, Doug, right before the break. Fire your missile at us, and we'll try to recover during the break and come right back to it after the break. Jump in, Doug. Go. All right. Thank you very much for taking my call. Um, I agree with the last three callers that I've heard um, while, while on hold. Um, first of all, we got to analyze what are we saying and, and why are we saying it? Are, are, are we actually – is it beneficial? I mean, is saying that beneficial? Is saying that going to be – a good disciple, a good good Christian, is that going to actually lead somebody to Christ? Second of all, love your enemies. Pray for those that persecute you. Um, Paul talks in most, multiple of books of his about being subject to our authorities. And finally, we have to remember, Jesus died for people like Joe Biden also. That's, I mean, we're all in the same boat. We need to just Okay. Well, Chris, I see you nodding over there. I, I, you're, you're having a hard time disagreeing with Doug. Doug, thanks for your call. Wow. What say you as we go into the break? It's a powerful statement that we do need to be witnesses for Jesus, and yeah. we need to be praying for him. And when we come back, we're going to talk more about, is it okay to say, let's go, Brandon? Hang on. More on the line of fire coming up after this. I'm Robert Helpler. I've been struggling with alcohol addiction for 25 years. It started causing a lot of problems with family. I just come to class and said, I can't do this no more. I finally woke up and I'm slowly killing myself. So my daughter, she introduced me to the mission. She said, Dad, I know a place I can take you where you can get help. And I come to the mission. I've done the 90-day program. Then I went to the one-year program. But since I accepted God in my life, really, a lot of doors is open for me. I've got my family back. I've actually been going for SafeTech, working on getting my GED. And since I've been at the mission, I've been saved. I've been baptized. And I'm a member of Woodland Baptist Church. I can do all things through Christ, Philippians 4.13. We all rejoice at what God has done with your prayers and support of the Winston-Salem Rescue Mission bringing this type of hope to broken lives. Thank you for the prayers and support of the Winston-Salem Rescue Mission. Ahoy, mates. It's Captain Stu for the Mayflower 2 in Rural Hall. Great specials all the time catering to everyone's taste. Did you know the Mayflower 2 has more than just delicious seafood? They've got burgers, steaks, salads, teriyaki chicken, and even homemade cakes for dessert. The dining room is open, takeout services available, and curbside as well. They're taking every precaution to provide the highest standard of safety for all their employees and wonderful customers. Go see Gus and Maria today at the Mayflower 2 exit 118 in Rural Hall. Attention all parents and grandparents. Gullion's Homeschool Headquarters is here to help. As I like to say, every child is homeschooled, so whether just supplementing their regular schooling, starting full-time this year at home, or entering your umpteenth season, Gullion's has the high-quality, God-honoring materials you need with a full line of new and budget-friendly use curriculum, store credit for your trade-ins, and caring, experienced advisors. Visit us soon at our King or Statesville locations, or call and we'll ship your order. See gullions.com for more info. 
Gullion's Christian Supply and Homeschool Headquarters. It's the Line of Fire with your host, activist, author, international speaker, and theologian, Dr. Michael Brown. Your voice of moral, cultural, and spiritual revolution. Get into the line of fire now by calling 866-34-TRUTH. Here again is Dr. Michael Brown. Okay, and then in comes this text. I mean, (laughs) you thought we had this thing figured out. Last five callers are saying never, you know, you shouldn't use that language. It's offensive. And, and, uh, you know, to say let's go Brandon is the equivalent of cursing. And, of course, earlier some callers said we don't think that. But then this guy texts. He says, look, that expression means much more than than just bleep Joe Biden. It is calling out the fact that the media is so biased and that we're going to battle and blaming the church for everything that goes wrong is not appropriate. It's a polite way to make a stand. Obviously, our role is to bring people to Christ, but there are times when we have to make a stand against evil. So that's what a caller who's a conservative Christian, who's not angry or mad or you know being vindictive, but that's what he just said about that expression, saying, look, it's a clean way to, to, to say, hey, there's a there's a there's a whole lot of evil going on. There, and those, so, those are some great for points. instance, for instance, during this this a massive trial about this kid who defended himself against the pedophile who attacked him to kill him. Mm-hmm. He shoots the guy and he's completely, you know, vind, you know, vindicated. You know, what is his name? Josh, the, the Rittenhouse kid. OK, uh, yeah. Well, OK, that trial was for everyone to see, see the kid crying, see all that. But there's another trial going on that. Fact, all kinds of corrupt politicians, some in power, some not in power anymore, were, were their hands were were bloodied with children and sex slavery. And there was an, a gag order on the sex slave trial with this gazelle, this, you know, this yep. this, this man, this man's uh, mistress who set up arranged all this awful sexual slavery and just trafficking and evil stuff. No one heard about that trial. The networks, not even the conservative networks, hardly reported it. It's because there were too many politicians tied up in it. Many po- you, won't, you still won't hear about it. And they have covered the Biden Justice Department. The DOG has, has put a stifling, they've smothered that whole trial. So none of the names of the corrupt Democrat white male oppressors and, 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 and men who were complicit in Epstein's Island, all of those guys are covered. Now, you go dig and you go look and you have there's a lady that covered the whole thing called House and Habitat on Instagram. She is not a she does not profess to be a believer or to be a part of the right wing. Yeah. But she's aghast that all of these 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 people, white male Democrat leaders are getting off scot free. But Gazelle took the hit. And yeah, was and, guilty. and if it had been the other side, too, if it had been a Christian that had done that, they'd be all over oh, it and publicizing, but they're yeah. covering up because they want to protect yeah. their own. But then, but even then, does that justify using the language, let's go, Brandon? It's a nicer way of saying what others are saying, which is horrible. Yeah. But Christians are struggling, th- you know, because they're saying, well, that, you know, that that's like cussing. So if you say it, you've cussed, and other Christians say, well, I didn't cuss. That's why I said that, because, you know, I'm, I'm upset. But, you know, so... Oh, Chris. Well, I think the text that you just read is, is uh, symptomatic of many Christians. There are a lot of people out there who don't even know, you know, the story I shared from the NASCAR race. Right. They don't know what it means. Right. They they just believe in the concept, like your your texter said, of, you know, we've got problems here and we need to do something yeah. about it. Call in numbers 866-34-TRUTH. I'm Stu Epperson, uh, special guest Chris Hughes here, uh, guest hosting today for my good friend, Dr. Michael Brown, who is recovering. Appreciates all your prayers. He'll be back Monday. God willing, we're going to go to more calls. The number is 866-34-TRUTH. Now, as we kind of get to the to the downward, to kind of bring the plane in for landing trajectory of the show, we ask you to keep your comments as brief as you can. And we're going to thank Carl for hanging on so long. 866-34-TRUTH. If you want to jump into the line of fire real quick before we get out of here, Carl, you're on the air. Yes, yes sir. How are you? Great. Thanks for calling in. Good luck. I really think it's kind of silly. And if I was go to a church where either one was then either one of those things, I probably wouldn't join either one of them because it's, it's got, the gospel's about more than that. And it's, it's kind of just silly to be talking about stuff like that. Yeah. I mean, it's like you've, you've got off the main river and got gone down some tributary yeah. and just staying on that. Yeah. Chris, let, let me ask you. I mean, is, is this the whole thing, an attack to the enemy to divide us and to get us into the trivial things? 
kind of to be tossed to and fro? Does it re- does it reflect the a lot of immaturity maybe in the body of Christ to, to have this as such a controversy? I mean, it, it's social media, it's it's just sad to see Christians upset and other Christians, you know, just jumping right in. Well, I think people jump on the bandwagon. And, and Carl, thank you for calling. We appreciate you waiting. You know, when, when you look at it, I, I, I don't know, Stu, it, it's it's sad to see what's happening in the church, but I, in some one sense, it's a wake-up call, but another way, it's a distraction, because we're over here fooling with this instead of concentrating right, yeah. on what the Bible yeah. charges us What if do. we spent this whole hour praying? Yeah, We have people calling and praying for the president. Or what if we pray said for, pray for Joe? I was thinking about that when we started could, the show. Yeah, yeah, that's the other thing. What could you yell yeah, pray instead for of that Biden. that would be, you know, uh, so, but then you also don't want someone to say, well, you're cussing because you're chanting something. Yeah. You know, so you got to pick the, pick, choose your words carefully. Uh, sir, let's, uh, Nancy, you might just be our last call today because we are almost out of time, but thanks for calling the line of fire, Nancy. You're on the air. Hi, I'll keep it brief. A couple of things is I really believe Jesus loves people and it's the sin that he hates. And so you shouldn't be saying things that are like throwing rocks or you know, uh, cursing other people. I really think it is, we should be all praying. We should be having revival and trusting God that he's going to intervene. Um, And, you know, we're supposed to be praying for those in authority. It didn't Mm. say we had to agree with them, but it says to pray for them for peace for us. Okay. So well, that's my opinion. I appreciate your call, Nancy. God bless you. And I don't can't think right. of anyone that's disagreeing with that, but uh, what do you want to say to that, Chris? Well, Nancy, I appreciate that. We do need to pray. And I would challenge our listeners. I mean, this is a – Dr. Brown has a huge audience. We need to be praying for the salvation of our president and other leaders and pray that God will give them guidance. But specifically, I want to challenge you uh, to pray for their salvation. There does come a time when we have to take a stand against evil, but I don't know that chanting, let's go Brandon, is a way to take a stand. There are ways for us to get involved. There are ways for us to register to vote, to witness to other people. And the only way to change the culture is to change the hearts and minds of people where they will turn their hearts and minds back to Jesus Christ. And that's what we're trying to do here at the Truth Network. Yeah, and I appreciate that word. And, you know, here's the deal. Bottom line truth on this. And, Chris, I want you to weigh in and I want you to talk a little bit about because this is kind of where you're going on the Christian perspective, we have a whole a whole army of young people. Your daughter's in here, twenty years old, you know, aspiring student, doctor, you know, future neurosurgeon. But there's so many young people that are that are tragically buying into communism. They're looking for some a void to fill, and, yeah. and I think sometimes they see the body of Christ as a bunch of angry, you know, angry conservatives, you yeah. know, chanting and yelling. And and again, I'm not denigrating those that that christians that in good conscience you know they're they've they're praying through this thing and they don't find those words offensive like others do but chris will you take us to a higher level for us please real quick and and give us a give us kind of a bottom line in here will you well i would just challenge the body of christ we've shared several verses today and callers have too uh this not glorifying god when you're basically cursing the president of the United States. Now, on the other hand, you will hear me on a national level taking a stand against the policies. I don't support his policies on hardly anything, but I don't want to say F the president of the United States. I want to see him come to the saving grace of Jesus Christ. But you can get involved today. You can be involved by praying for your president. You can get involved by getting involved in your local community. You know, the school boards right now, which I know this show is not about, but uh, elections are coming up this year. And we need to turn our school boards around for Jesus. And that's something that every one of you can do in your own local community. Mm. Uh, You can pray for and recruit Christian candidates. You can support Christian candidates. It's time to elect godly men and women to public office. And when we do that, we won't have to worry about disagreeing with the policies of the president or anybody else. If we can unite as a body of Christ, which we have not been effective at doing, we need to quit fighting with each other and take a stand as a body of Christ and tell the world about Jesus. I love what this gentleman said earlier at lunch. What do you think about all these listen, listen. Christians yelling, let's go, Brandon? Is that is that appropriate for Christian to do? What say you? Uh, no, the Bible says we're supposed to pray for those in authority over us. And the church, we really have to make a separation between the world and who we are. And if we just stay separate from the world and keep our, keep our, our stand with God and keep our salt. But Jesus said if the salt loses its flavor, it's good for nothing. Wow. And we are the preservants of the world. We, we preserve in America wow. as born-again believers. And we got to make a stand to keep America standing firm and strong because without us, 
America's doom. Boy, he's okay. preaching it right How there. How about Steve. that guy? Pretty power. I had got some other yeah. ones. I didn't get a chance to play him, but the 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 goal really in in the the gentleman on the show yesterday we talked about how if every christian would just share their faith what kind of revival would break out if every christian would think about the unbelievers all around us and we're and i'm more concerned i'm more anxious and excited about politics Mm -hmm. and vote in the voting thing than i am about leading people to jesus but i think what 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 you're talking about with your show christian perspective nationwide chris hughes is you're trying to say look it doesn't have to be either or right the church doesn't have to run away from politics. The church can speak prophetically in the land, but do so in a loving, gracious way, correct? And That's Christians correct. as well. Get engaged. Yes. Young people, get engaged. Yep. It's time for the people of Jesus Christ and the church of Jesus Christ to get engaged, to get educated first we really need to get educated on the issues first and that's something that we have a problem with as pastors who don't preach the word of god we have christians who don't read the word of god how can you have a biblical perspective if you don't know what the bible says in the first place so i challenge you as we're starting this new year to get involved in the word of god uh you can you know you could read through the entire bible by reading about 13 chapters a day in three months you could read the entire bible so i encourage you to read the word of god to, and I encourage you pastors to preach the word of God. Let's get educated, informed, and then engage to impact the culture for Jesus. Yeah, we really got to start thinking about souls. We've got to dial it up for that. We got to ask, what is God's heart? And of course, we've got to have the righteous indignation. But yeah. we got to pray that as we express that, we better express it. We don't want those trains to go by silently in Nazi Germany and the churches just saying louder so they'd have to listen to the screaming Jews going to their execution. So we need to speak out. But we need to do so in love and in grace, and and we need to do so with the goal of winning souls, not winning arguments. And taking a stand for Jesus Christ and tell everybody you know that Jesus is coming again. What's your website? ChristianPerspective.us.